What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Decred in Depth. I'm your host, Angelo, and on today's show, we have DCR community member Pavel. That's how you say it, right? Yeah, yeah that's correct. <laughs> All right, excellent. So he has a new proposal that we're going to look over and discuss. That is, uh... it's it's still in vo- It's already voting. Uh, I think it's last two hours to finish the voting. Nice. So Pavel, let's get into the basics. What is your background and how did you fall into the CC space? Yeah, uh, good talking uh, to you, Angelo, and thank you for inviting me here. Uh, I think it's really nice, uh, really nice space where to express maybe more of you know people's thoughts and give more background on where people are coming from. Sometimes I feel this information get uh, gets lost in the text chat where we use the chat in in different portals. So I think this is really nice. So I'm a I'm a tech guy, and I pretty much started scripting when I was 13. So that was over 20 years now. Uh, so I'm coding full time right now. I'm a CTO in one uh, startup in Switzerland uh, in the real estate space, and I have started two companies. Uh, one of them. I shut down, then second of them uh, we sold to one of the biggest competitors within within the area. So I have this 360 uh, view on, you know, like like general business, I would say. I'm not, I'm not saying it's completely the same like in, in crypto. Crypto is like very specific. But uh, when you just talk about, you know, classic companies, I've done pretty much all the things from building the stuff uh, like tech stuff and doing sales and marketing for my companies and talking to customers, doing some financials, managing people, et cetera, et cetera. Understood. So with everything that's going on in the world, how do you feel the macro environment with COVID is affecting the CC space? So I, I think this year is huge opportunity to kind of like tell your story, uh, whatever you are trying to tell. Uh, because people are, you know, locked down. They are at home. They have more more time to consume. They are looking at videos. They are reading content. Uh, because there is nothing else they can do, right? Like some countries, like uh, France and Spain, people were locked down for three months in their apartments. They couldn't go out. They they could just go out to buy groceries for one hour, and that's it. And I've talked to some of my friends from these countries and. It was really crazy. Like we haven't had there that here in Switzerland where I live now. Uh, so it just like gives you perspective on you can really go and you know communicate what you want your story effectively to these people. Right, understood. And what was your contractor process like when you first got involved with with Decred? Uh, so I think it was pretty much organic. So I, I started chatting uh, with some of the people from the community and then suddenly somebody mentioned that checkmate is planning to build this charting website and so i texted him uh we discussed a few things and from that we from that chat i think we hit it off Hmm. understood so now you have an open proposal uh with uh with decred.org do you want to get into the details of that and and what does that consist of yeah right so um, I started maybe a step back. I started with Decred and thinking about with Decred portal as a form first for myself because usually when new people, when my my friends are new to crypto, I advise them to you know go and have a bit of read about Bitcoin. I send them some videos or some some articles. Then I tell them to buy a bit uh, just to you know like kind of like watch it for a few weeks. So they can get to uh, get used to this like volatility, right? Price going up and down, and suddenly it shows you five hundred dollars more, and then it shows you five hundred dollars less in your wallet. So that this is something that people needs to need to get used to, right? And then it was really hard for me to tell every every one of them about Decred and all of, all of the strengths, right? And just the complexity is higher than, than with Bitcoin. So imagine when and they have to learn like and understand what Bitcoin is and why it's so important and uh, how does the whole system works, right? It is a, it's a combination of multiple things like cryptography and software and then finances or, uh, you know, so, so it takes some time. And then... When, when I started describing Decred as well and 
how it's different and advanced compared to Bitcoin, it was very hard. And I, I think it was like time consuming, right? So I was searching for a way how I can make my life easier and how to do this process more effectively. And so I was starting thinking about, okay, how uh, am I able to communicate this information in like one piece in some consumable uh, format in a sense that they don't get lost, right? I have uh, I had that feeling that if I send somebody to Decred Org, uh, then they could get kind of lost because Decred Org is focused uh, or built for several different type of you know like visitors. So, for example, you have your uh, retail investors, you can have like, your institutional investors, miners. Um, and then maybe some journalists. And so Decred.org has to fulfill mul multiple uh, you know, goals. And so you can get lost there, right? So then I, I, I started like forming this idea to create a, um, a website where we create and publish a few articles that are formed into, into a funnel or structured into a funnel-like structure. And they can go and consume this content hopefully easily or more easily and at the end or throughout the drought if they are ready to you know they say looks look this uh, this looks like good potential technology and just ecosystem to get my skin into then they can just hit the button by this year and I, I just um, you know like pick some of the with the community I ask I pick some of the exchanges or, or ways how you can purchase the decret. So according to you, you know, like on your personal note, why do you feel that marketing is so important uh, when it comes to the CC space? Yeah, so now, you know, like five, six years ago, uh, besides Bitcoin, there was not much, right? So if it, if it came to cryptocurrencies, everybody was talking about Bitcoin. And then you had even some sponsored... Um, uh, like famous people like Katy Perry did something with with her nails right like i heard this uh, somewhere on twitter that some some people got to crypto uh through uh, thanks to that and like bitcoin was like completely new thing so it naturally also just gained some marketing traction in media and then more like mainstream media etc right and when you look at the market right now you have thousands of different crypto, right? Most of them are tokens, are not native blockchains. So at least that's, you know, that's better. You can, you need to position yourself when somebody looks at top 50 or top 100 and they go through those tokens, there needs to be for you a way how do you position yourself. I am a native blockchain. I'm doing something that is special, uh, right? This is how I compare in the, in the crypto kind of like landscape uh, so it's really necessary to have this marketing presence in a way that's, you know, acceptable to, to your community and, and acceptable to you as what you are trying to build and uh, what you are trying to communicate. Uh, and I think there is so much noise right now within the CC space that without marketing, it's, it's, it's really hard to get the direction. Understood. So we know that DCR is known for, for investing heavily into development. Uh, why do you think it's important for us to pivot and focus a little bit more on marketing? So this is a great question. And um, when you look how we are financing the software development, and I agree completely with this uh, thesis or strategy to, to invest in development, right? Because at the end of the day, that's, that's what really matters. Um, but we need to kind of like, get some word out and the reason why it's important is that we we are accumulating the treasury in dcr but we are paying people in fiat terms right so if the dcr is uh 50 bucks this month then we pay out let's say 10 dcr but if it's five bucks ne next month then we are pay paying uh you know 500 uh dcr and so if if you know, if, if something happened and the price, so now we have the runway around seven years, I think. And if something happens and the price falls into like $1 per decret, and suddenly you are not at seven years, but you are at one, like 70% of one year, right? 
So uh, if, if we want or not, we need to maintain the price of uh, Decred in a certain level to, to be able to fund this software development, right? And I think what's also important is if the price is kind of like growing, even like slowly, then the, co- then the community is happy, contributors are happy, uh, miners are happy as well, right? And so if you are happy, you can just contribute more, easier, you know, you are just happy to um, work on the software. And so you have like number of studies that show you that when people are happy, they can contribute uh, better, easier, they can, you know, they're just more productive. They are more happy with their delivery, et cetera, et cetera. To date, what do you think has been missing from Decred's marketing and how would you address that? Yeah, so what is what is missing? Uh, and I was thinking about this for a few months, like how to approach uh, mar- like marketing in the cryptocurrency space for reasonable money and how to do it that it, you know, you can align also with uh, like cyber punk, punk community. And I think I found maybe a strategy how to do it. And so what we have is right now, it's the problem is not that we wouldn't have a good content. The problem is that we don't have a good content distribution strategy. And what that means is, if you look at the uh, if you look at the some of the statistics of our content that we produce and that we pay now for, you will see that the numbers first of people who see that this content and the engagement is really really low okay so some of the examples uh i have here so in medium we have the decred journal decred marketing mechanics by checkmate we have the decred journal for august july and june by richard red and these four uh, articles have on average like 300 claps okay 300 claps is six people because one person can clap 50 times up to 50 times right and so this is like extremely low engagement and i think what most of the community you know like you don't think about it but what most of the community doesn't realize is that if we increase this engagement and and we put more claps on these articles then medium will push these articles to to more people right and suddenly you have bigger uh, um, awareness and that's what we are missing at the moment. Then if you look at uh, some of the videos or all of the videos that Exitus produces, right? Like video is the most challenging format or content to produce online because it takes so much, uh, so much energy you need to prepare, you need to write a script, you need to uh, do the you know, post-production, you need to cut the video, et cetera, et cetera. And then you look at the statistics on YouTube and you see 400 views, uh, one comment, two comments, three comments. And what is it? I don't know. Uh, let me look quickly. Maybe like 40 or 50 likes. Maybe not even that. Okay. And so, again, like look at other videos on YouTube where now uh, that you find or maybe other channels can be from cryptocurrency space or outside of CC space. And you will see like much, much, much bigger engagement. And it's not that we would not have those people in the community. I think just the community doesn't realize it's so important to like, so important to comment, uh, so important to subscribe to the channel, uh, because then those al- those algorithms that are within those platforms, they will push natively the content to to more people, right? And so how we can approach this uh, content distribution or better content distribution is is following and let me give you two examples so let's take exitus's video so first he he does the whole video production and it takes him 80 percent of the energy right and now we are not doing the rest of the you know the rest of the activities which takes only 20 percent of energy but that 20 percent will deliver most value because that 20 percent is the content distribution so what you can do is you can you you can take that video and upload it to more video portals. And I'm not saying like there's too many of them and, and that we have to put them on, you know, like dozen, but maybe there is some video portal that is, uh, that is accessible in China because YouTube is not accessible in China, right? And maybe there is some um, famous video portal for India, maybe for Africa. So 
you know, here is where community can give, uh, give us some input and say, look, guys, uh, we can go and try to upload it here. Then you can take that video and just extract audio, right? And again, you can take that audio and just push it to multiple podcast portals. That's what you, uh, you are doing, right? Like you have podcasts on several, push to several uh, different portals. Then we can use the trans transcript that, uh, that Exitus already have or just the script and we can use that and publish it on Medium or we can boil it down. We can create a tweet storm from it and we can use the tweet storm as a base for medium article and as a base for article on publish zero X. Okay. And then we can use those most important points uh, about what happened last month in, in Decred, right. And we can uh, publish that as answers to Quora questions, because on Quora, you have uh, a lot of engagement, a lot of people is following crypto uh, topics. And so you can use this, you know, already existing, content and just to push it to that portal that that has a huge seo uh we can maybe get to that a bit like why quora right and so suddenly now you have from one it's like seemingly one content you are on 10 different platforms uh video audio text and then kind of like faq if, if we want to call it uh, if we want to call quora like that Okay, so so you can see and you can you can you can even go like further and you can uh, maybe read this tweet storm or on TikTok or you can do stories on Instagram. So there is so many different ways how you can repackage this content and just provide it or, or push it to the platform, different platforms. And it's important to push it on those platforms in the native way of those platforms, right? So when you when you talk about Instagram, you would do stories because they have most engagement. When you when you talk about Twitter, then you create tweetstorm because that has mo most engagements, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? Then when we take second example, now we are doing pod, right? So uh, the outcome of this pod will be audio, right? But it, there is nothing stopping us to attach even a static image to this audio and upload it to YouTube and some of these other portals if we if we decide to, right? Then we can boil this, uh, boil this podcast down again into most important points and we can create a tweet storm. We can use this tweet storm and publish it on Medium and PublishX and then repurpose this tweet storm and use it for Quora. We can do the, you know, all over again, what I said. You see that pattern, what I'm, what I'm trying to say? So I think this is, this is very, you know, like easy to kind of like do strategy because we already have uh, quality content about Decred. There is a lot of articles that were written, uh, you know, either about Decred in, in whole, in general, or on-chain metrics that uh, Czech and Permable Nino are doing. I think those are like amazing resources, and some of those, some of crypto networks would be like so pumped to have people like this uh, in their community. But we don't use this content yet to leverage all the all the value, right? Like if we are just if we don't engage with this content on social media, we don't hit that like and do those fifty claps and. Put that command and, and reshare it with with our network. Then we are leaving money on the table, right? You think so? For example, look at um, the budget of Exitus, right? Like right now, he he got approved like what maximum two and a half thousand per month uh, was his budget, and you think or maybe some some people think this is expensive. This is not expensive. What is expensive is that we are not extracting the fifty thousand dollars that. Uh, that is translated for all the people that see that content, right? That watch that content and, and come and contribute and uh, buy some decred, contribute to the ecosystem, reshare that uh, video, reshare that article, et cetera, et cetera. So what's actually expensive is this content, the missing content distribution strategy that we are missing right now. What is something unique that comes to mind to you that, that you would want to offer to implement? to improve the current marketing situation? 
outside of what we've already done, which you just described. Yeah, I think mostly this is this what I'm talking about right now. So I have now that proposal in voting, right? That's about to finish in, in two hours. And so that's just like one piece, one experiment that I'm trying and that, uh, you know, like grow the community through uh, some giveaways. So basically, you know, again, like many people look at this and they say, we don't want to do giveaways and, and give the credit away for free. And I agree with that, but it's also like kind of like uh, a mechanism to, to raise some interest of people. And so it's different if you just like send somebody a DCR, right? For some like very easy or, you know, just comment, comment here, or you do something more creative with it. And so what I'm doing with it and what I'm pl planning with it is you know, like start from, from outside at, at first sight, it will look like these giveaways that, that you see all over Twitter. But what I'm planning to do is, um, look, if you want to participate in this giveaway, go here on this website, on this URL, which will be like withdecred.org slash win, take a screenshot of that page, like first hit the button, that button will read the, the last, uh, blog hash it will it will show you like spinner and then it will show you like one added value one value proposition of decred so for example like dex with zero fees and no kyc and your your task is to take a screenshot of the on of this right you're on mobile take a screenshot of that screen and put it as comment uh to that to that giveaway tweet and tag one or two people right and then when you think about it, what this creates is will be like dozens of comments under one tweet. And each of these comments will, will uh, include a picture with one of the values, one, one of the value proposition of Decred. And suddenly you are scrolling your Twitter and you, you mostly see, you know, like text content. And suddenly you see uh, a picture. And in that picture, right away, you see that value proposition of Decred, right? And you are like, you know, like suddenly there are two, three, four seconds uh, of of attention that 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 we just took from that person, right? Um, so so again, like you can you can kind of like play with this and and do maybe with with, with the lighting network, uh, like lighting torch as uh, as they did in Bitcoin. Uh, so there are many creative ways, and you can go and turn this around in different ways. Uh, and just, you know, engage with that community. I think now after running the with Decred Twitter for about a month, month and a half, I see that people engage more and more uh, with that account, much more than with the main Decred project Twitter account. And so it's different strategy, right? But I was trying to, to see if I can kind of like activate the community and let them maybe chat about also maybe different uh, different aspects of Decred, maybe even different topics, right? It's just to reactivate the community and grow that community. Uh, what have been some of the challenges that you faced uh, within the community? Mm, one, of, one of the things which is hard is uh, sometimes get feedback or just uh, some response of on, on my thoughts. And uh, it's kind of challenging in a way that uh, I understand that People are working on stuff, right? And nobody, no, not everybody is connected all the time uh, on metrics or some, somewhere on Discord or Twitter. And, and then when you ask something, um, then I saw like really little or few replies uh, to some of, the, some of the thoughts, right? Like just recently uh, I was texting, I think like would be interesting to me personally to hear some of the stories of, of people, right, who currently contribute to Decred, how, how they got to Decred, what motivates them, what are some of the, you know, what is their personal story, how, how they came to this point, but also what is some of their other interests, right? And again, it, it's something to understand people better as well when we are, you know, like communicating or discussing some of the challenges we are facing. And also it's very nice um, an interesting content how to um, how to 
just bring in maybe new people and just make the enlarge the community right because the, all these personal stories in crypto i i find them really interesting just to see like you know what what people have been through uh and so you can understand them better where they are where they are coming from why they are working on stuff uh, that they are working on etc cetera, etc cetera. what are some of the things that you're most optimistic about when it comes to the to the project Um, I would say what what really interests me is the security, and that's one aspect. And then the governance and be uh, you know have a say. And I think Decred is really inclusive uh, from this perspective. And I'm really looking forward uh, slowly as as the treasury grows and as the Decred price grows as well. It will open up many new opportunities right so now we are kind of on a this like risk uh phase or i don't know how to call it so we are trying to watch the expenses really really hard right so mostly or most of the money really go into development but imagine if we don't have like 7 million but you have 70 million or you have you know 150 million suddenly you can invest into so many different things and i'm not saying that we should go and throw money around but again like this is where the interviews with existing people from the community would be really nice because i'm sure there are interesting uh, activities that suddenly we would be able to fund correct uh, what are some of your concerns long term for the project or holes that you may see that we need to work on hmm. Um, so apart from marketing or just, you know, awareness and our outreach and just growing the community, um, I think what I would really like to see after we are done with 1.6, uh, really is I would like to see more co collaboration with other communities and it can be on, on technical level, that would be best, but it can be also on, on, on different level, just, you know. Uh, maybe doing discussions together with some of the people from their community and some of the people from from Decred community. I think that would be really interesting. And I think this is this is kind of like crucial. So how how would you increase the speed and the size of the network effects? And one of one very good way how to do it is connect with different ecosystems and connect also the technology in a sense when it makes sense right and so uh there was just a podcast from rough consensus i think published yesterday and uh, uh there was there was a good topic about like credit markets and just making the economy uh like starting the economy right by providing credit and make people be, be able to, to borrow and uh you know just be able to to work and plug this in into into real economy or some activities at least, right? Even if you just create a marketplace of, I don't know, art or whatever, just connecting connecting Decred to kind of like real world. Understood. Well, Pavel, I appreciate you coming on the show and, and taking time out to discuss your proposal and your future plans for DCR. Do you have any closing thoughts and message to potential stakeholders? Yeah, I would. I would um, probably like to uh, like to say two things. Uh, first, I, I think we really need to start engaging with the content more. And if you want to create or like think about analogy, imagine a restaurant somewhere in the city, and there are twenty or thirty people going to the restaurant, and they are extremely happy with the restaurant. Every time they go there, they after the meal, they go to the chef, they say, they thank him, right? And, and they're really happy, but none of them leaves a Google review, right? And so if this happens, then the community of the restaurant will never grow because most people, what, what do you do, right? Right now you come to a new city or you are just you know cycling or walking throughout your city, you open Google Maps, uh, you look for restaurants and you look at their, their reviews. And I found myself with my wife looking at reviews like we are standing in front of the restaurant, you know, like 10 meters, and we are looking at Google reviews like if people like this place. 
And so we need to start engaging with the content that we are producing in order and be supportive, right? Uh, in order for more people to kind of like be able to find that content as well and find the cred. So, so I think this is, this is one message that I would like to leave the community with. And second, what I forgot to say uh, about VDCred website, the purpose was also to find like very easy to replicate process how to enlarge the community, right? So if I send somebody to VDCred website, he goes through that information or some of that information and he likes it, then he can purchase DCred. And then he can do the same, right? Like after, you know, one week, two weeks, one month, he can do the same and tell uh, tell their his friends, look, look at this portal. Here is all the information. You can compare it to, to Bitcoin if you know Bitcoin, right? And look at this portal. You have all the information there. At the end, you can just hit the, hit the button and buy a few this year. And so this is like extremely good tool how you can uh, gain a good momentum or just a replication process of growing the community. This is, this is one of the, you know, like main goals, um, behind PD cred. And now we'll be translating it, uh, probably to, to Spanish, uh, because I know the Latin American community and some people as well within, within Brazil are using already this, this portal to, to try and onboard some, uh, newcomers. So I just encourage more people to do this uh, and provide us with, with the feedback and it will try to, you know, like enhance the pro- portal, improve the website based on the feedback. Because if that website is worthless, you know, if, if it doesn't work, then we can just pull it down, right? The, pur- the purpose is that people use it and we get that feedback and we can just improve how the website is used and just help us grow the community with it. Understood. Thank you for coming on the show, Pavel. Appreciate you. Thank you very much for taking the time as well and for inviting me.